All right, we have done an orthographic drawing here. We put some dimensions on it, and uh, we are in the end probably going to do something like this from this point. Actually, from the point where we're right here, we're going to do it in either Inventor or uh, 3D AutoCAD or something like SketchUp. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and clean this drawing up to take you to where, where, where you would have gotten uh, before uh, you would have flipped into 3D. And that's pretty much this front drawing here. You know or less have everything is projected through in one way, shape, or form. Everything is parallel to this plane, if you would. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and freeze some layers here, showing you once again um, lots of different tools that are around here, but this kind of idea home here. We have a layer. We can freeze that layer. We don't want that one. We don't actually want that one. We don't want the dimension layer. And it's the layer, so we want to go ahead and set our current layer to object, which means we can then use these freeze the layers, freeze the dimension, freeze the hidden, and in all reality, all we really needed was this piece. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the things that we know in terms of grouping things together, both the P edit to get the major boundary and then the B poly to make some minor boundaries and then the extrude. So this is where I'll go into 3D. But um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got one extra layer called junk, which I don't have. So I'm going to go minus layer, and for new junk. And I've got a layer called junk I can use. But first, I'm going to use p-edit. If you remember how important that is, it's going to check, yes, join. Check that I did everything correctly on my exterior boundary. So I've done a made a boundary there. That's good. I'm going to do P edit here and grab this. Yes, J for join. And that is always closed. And this one here, instead of drafting lines on top of lines, I'm just going to use the B poly. And first, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right layer, the layer being junk, if you would. And then saying B poly which is boundary poly, and I'm going to go ahead and make a polyline of that. So we've got now one, two, three, four, essentially four closed regions or polylines. The circle will act as one. And so what we do next is we make regions of them. Before I do that, I'm going to go and show you on this. I'm going to go ahead right now and make a new layer, minus layer, new side view stuff. We'll put this stuff on the side here, side view objects. I'm going to go ahead and change both of these just to get them out of the way. Put them on another layer. Very often, if you put things on layers like that, you might give them better names than I just did, but you can more or less go back to the layer that you're working on and then eventually freeze out the layers you don't want. So right now we've got a region. We don't have regions, so the last thing we do is we make a region of each of these objects, right? It's going to put that region on the object layer because that's the layer we were on when we made the region. And now we can do the extrudes. Extrude is a 3D command. Extrude sweep, loft, revolve are the major commands for taking flat projections, flat drafting, and make something more or less 3D out of them. I like to extrude back and forward. In other words, I'm going to extrude some of this back and some of this forward off the major front face of that. So I'm going to do extrude is the command. Grab your object. I'm going to give it a minus 3. That went 3 back. Extrude. As I do that, I forgot to do one thing just so you can see it. I'm going to do V ports. I'm going to make 2. And in this one, I'm going to go V point 1, 1, 1. 1. So I can kind of see where I'm, what I'm doing with this. So I'm going to go over here again and say extrude. Grab my objects. It's going to ask me the distance. I'm going to tell it minus 3. You see what it did right there. I'm going to say now I could either grab it here. You, know, you see it's highlighting in both places. Or I could grab it here and type extrude. And in this case, I'm going to extrude 0.25. But I didn't want 0.25, or I think actually did it correctly. Undo here, undo. 
I'm going to extrude, grab this object, and say minus 0.25. I'm sorry, 0.25. Point two five, and you see it came out correctly this time. Take each of these, I can grab them both, and say extrude and then minus. In this case, since I want to cut all the way through very often, I'll say minus four because my last command here then is last two commands. The first one is union. How we add things together, either union we, to add them or subtract to subtract them. So I union those things together. You see it got rid of the, the joint line there and then subtract. C B S U B T R A C T. First thing, thing it asks you is to select what to subtract from, and then you tell it what to subtract, and you have now what is that 3D piece. Now the reason why you do that is manyfold. You've actually got something you can use. You can change your visual styles and do it something like something you can see a little bit better. And you get that sense of a piece that's, you can see those lines coming through. A piece that is actually in all reality 3D. It actually has, if you type mass prop, like you would do for a region in a flat world. It actually has physical properties like density and resistance to rotation and all the like. Now, why do you go about doing that? Well, again, this is one piece on the screen, so I'm going to bring back my viewports, my single viewport screen, single, okay, viewports. I'm going to type plan. Plan is a great command because it always takes you back to looking down at the world as you think it is. And visual styles here. If in fact you now have that piece and you were going to go about plotting, you remember we're going to go back now and make our viewport again. Make viewport bigger than we think we're going to need. So I'm going to make one right now, put it on the view layer. Take from here to here at 5 comma 5. I've now got a viewport, V for view, new, front, clicky click off, select my box from my endpoint here, my endpoint there. Once again, you probably will do this in Venture, but in AutoCAD, if you have a part that's drafted in 3D, you are relatively okay now because you have the view made to go over here and get rid of that here. We'll talk about making viewports that are the right size. I'm going to make mine half as big with an M view command. Instead of 5x5, five five, I'm going to make it half as big. I'm going to tell it to be at 2.5, 2.5, that idea of congruency. I'm here V for view, front, set current, okay, and I select my view and I get the warm fuzzy of one to two. What we're now gonna show you is the piece de resistance, and that is two commands, sal view and sal draw. First you make the viewports for the solid, and then you make the, do the draw to have the program do it. So I'm gonna do it relatively quickly here. I'm moving that viewport so I can do two sides of it if I would. The command is S-O-L-V-I-E-W, sal view, we're gonna collect Select an orthographic. You're going to grab the side of the viewport, tell it the center of where you want it, hit a return, and then tell it a box around where you want your viewport to be. It asks for a name. I'll just give it a junk name for now, and I can do it again. S-O-L-V-I-E-W, orthographic, side to project, give it the center, Hit a return. It's funny because you that's a weird interface. You got to do that. Give it another weird name. And finally, I'm going to do what is a section view. S-O-L-V-I-E-W. Section. Grab a point on a plane. F8. Point on a plane here. Side to view from. Tells you the scale off to the side here. 
and then tell it where it is. It's going to show you a fair bit of stuff. Last command is sal draw. We'll do that in the next video. Thanks for listening.